Hey guys, Weeby News here, and today we are back with another video. And I am so excited because today we are doing the Wheel of Fate with the Danganronpa and Another One cast. And I have been dying to make this video basically like since I started streaming Danganronpa and Another. So I'm super duper excited to see what kind of crazy uh, results we get. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the Wheel of Fate trend, I kind of want to briefly go over the rules here. So basically, you're creating a Danganronpa game, but you're spinning the wheel to randomize every role in the game, like the first victim, first culprit, protagonist, etc. And so yeah, you can get some pretty wild results while you're spinning this. And I usually like to come up with scenarios to like try to explain the madness somewhat, you know? For this one too, I want to include spinning for a rival and support character since I've seen a lot of people do that, but for some reason I just never really thought to do that. And for this video, I'm going to leave the rival, the support, the protagonist in every spin. That way we can create as chaotic of a game as possible, you know? Because you never know when the rival, the protagonist might die. And then if one of those characters do die, I'll respin to choose a new character to replace them with. But yeah, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. Please, please God, please Lanouge, somebody hear my prayer. Don't let Mitch be the protagonist. Just don't. I don't, I don't ask for much. I don't, I don't ask for much. There's just one thing, one thing in life I want for Mitch not to be the protagonist or the rival or the support and for him to be the first victim killed by Maki. I don't ask for much. Okay, let's go ahead and go for it. So the first thing we're gonna spin for is the protagonist and I am so nervous. It's gonna be Mitch. I just feel it. I feel it in my bones, dude. I just fucking know he's coming for me. Protagonist, please don't let it be Mitch. Please, 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 God. Please, God. Oh, hey, Haru oh. or Kakaru. Haru, oh my God. I love Haru so much. Yes. Oh my God. I love Haru so much. He's such a freaking sweetheart, dude. <laughs> You could see like his inner thoughts when he's like seeing Satsuki too. I just like, I love them together so much. I think Haru would be kind of a fun protagonist too. Cause like, God bless his soul. He is, he's not super bright. So his like inner monologues when like investigating the trials. I feel like he would have to be helped a lot by whoever the support is. Like, oh my God, if it's Satsuki, it's just like two halves of one brain cell trying to come together. <laughs> like, then just like Ray in the corner, like, oh my God, are we really relying on this guy? And I thought Yuki was bad. Let's go ahead and spin for support. Okay, I'm gonna love it if it's Satsuki, dude. I'm gonna freak out. Oh, Akane! Ayame! Okay, Ayame! Oh, she's cute. That's She's got a good, like, best girl kind of thing going on. But I did want it to be Satsuki. I wanted it to be Satsuki so bad. Ayami's a sweetheart, though. I could see her being helpful. She's also a lot brighter than Haru, so I feel like she could uh, help. <laughs> she could definitely be a help during investigations. It'd be kind of an interesting dynamic to see between those two as well. I always am just gonna headcanon Ayame as being in love with Akane. So I think it'd be funny, like Haru is such a ladies man. He's like always like, yeah, you know Ayame, like <laughs> you're kind of my best girl, you're kind of my waifu. And she's just like, oh yeah, like staring at Akane in the corner. Oh, did you, did you say something Haru? Who is the rival? Let's see. Oh my god, it was fucking Mitch. No, 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 no. Oh, so close to being Satsuki. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, it's Ray. I mean, she was already kind of a rival in a way. I mean, she was just like, I guess Kinjo is mostly the rival, but he was also the boyfriend. It's like the unhinged boyfriend that you like love to hate and hate to love. But I feel like Ray was also kind of like a rival character. She was very Tagami-esque, like going around girl bossing, telling us all about how she knows the culprit and like she doesn't even need us, but she's not going to help us. But yeah, I definitely think Ray's a pretty good rival character. I mean, she's definitely very antagonistic from the beginning. It'd be interesting if she was able to get an arc in this one, but she'll probably die unfortunately unfortunately i feel like she would just hate haru because he's so dumb i feel like for haru like doing like hangman's gambit and stuff like he literally would be thinking for like 10 minutes straight like what what was that thing we were doing this chapter oh god it's coming it's coming to me p a r ray in the corner oh my god are we seriously do you guys not remember the party we all threw uh, t y party Everybody's like, oh my god, in no way. It was a party. It only took you 10 minutes to remember that. Slay Haru. No god, I should not have said that. Since she was always calling uh, Kazuna a slut, I like to think that she would uh, call Haru a himbo. Are we seriously relying on this fucking himbo over here? Hey, at least I know what a faucet is. Yuki's in the corner like, 
Hey! Oh, wait, what oh, oh, was the faucet again? Ray is just like, Jesus Christ. I'm just gonna first victim off myself. Deuces! Oh my god, first victim. Mitch, Mitch, Mitch. I am, I'm manifesting. Manifesting Mitch as the first victim and Maki as the first culprit. She deserves that. She deserves to be able to slay him, okay? First victim, let's go ahead. Okay, come on, come on, come on. I believe in you, we <gasps> Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Awesome if it was Haru that I did it too, and I could like experience killing Mitch. <laughs> First person perspective. It's just the killing Mitch simulator. The Mitch stands are gonna like, they're gonna be so sad, dude. They're gonna be so sad, man. I just manifested it. I just manifested it, okay? Okay, besties. I'm so sorry, besties. <laughs> Bye, Mitch. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Oh my god, I'm dead. I know I joke about hating Mitch all the time. I honestly did kind of want him to last longer just because, like, for the meme. You know what I mean? Okay, come on. Come on, Haru. Let's get that first person perspective murdering Mitch. That's what I want, baby. Is it real? No fucking way! How the fuck did I manifest this? What? God, are you listening? Are you here? Are you here right now? What? Oh my god, I was just memeing. I didn't expect this to happen. I fucking love this universe. I love this parallel universe. When like we discover that Maki killed him, everybody's just like, slay Maki! <laughs> Monokuma, can't you just come up with one exception? Like, I mean, she killed Mitch. He had it coming, come on now. This is what happened the first chapter. I'm not even, I'm not even gonna acknowledge the first chapter of Dagadrapa another anymore. This is the canon chapter. Slay Maki, slay! So the motive for this chapter is gonna be the same thing, like the despair videos, that everybody gets showing that, you know, their family's dead, soccer no longer exists. Oh my God, what is he gonna do? What's he gonna do without his precious soccer? He's like, no, my one personality trait, no, what else do I have? This? tears swelling in his eyes while he's making that face. I mean, you could honestly explain the scenario just by like, the same thing happens. Mitch tries to kill Kinjo at the nameplate switch. And so instead Maki shows up at the laundry room, but this time Mitch maybe like makes a loud noise or something and she overhears him and she ends up killing him cause she's just such a fucking girl boss. <laughs> I feel like the only thing is like Maki's so sweet. I feel like she wouldn't really be like a killer. I feel like Maki's too sweet to just like kill Mitch. You know, I feel like she would like tell him up or something and be like hey this guy like tried to murder me or something like can we like keep him tied up so i feel like that's probably what maki would do i don't think her first instinct would be to kill him you know so i feel like she would need to have like a better motivation and so the way that i think about it is just taking that scene where mitch like tries to force himself on akane but taking it farther akane and maki are super close maybe they're like hanging out in a room or something and then mitch comes by and he's like yo baby akane let's get together maybe like at that time when he like knocks on the door Maki is in the bathroom and so when she comes out she sees fucking Mitch trying to force himself on Akane and Akane being like yo dude back off and so he also brings like a weapon of some sort maybe like a hammer or a knife to threaten her with and it's kind of like a double thing just to go ahead and kill somebody because he's so upset about soccer being like over or something <laughs> Then Maki comes out of the bathroom and sees what's going on, and she ends up killing Mitch while protecting Akane, since Mitch brought a weapon. I think this scenario would lead to a lot of emotional moments too, since I feel like both Maki and Akane will want to protect each other. So at the beginning of the trial, they could both come out and say that they're the killer, and then your job as a player can be trying to figure out who's telling the truth, which would actually be pretty difficult since they're the only two witnesses and they're saying the opposite events happened. Also, since in this scenario, Maki sacrifices herself for Akane, I could see Akane having a similar breakdown to the one she has in chapter two. So in this version, too, we can get a scene where Akane loses her mind and Kakuru says she's all good. Bye, Maki. I'm sorry. But thank you, Queen. Thank you for taking one for the team. Slay, bestie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good now. Okay. Who is the second victim? Let's see. <gasps> oh, no! Oh, no! I don't want it to be either of them! Who would do this? Who would kill the best girl, dude? I fucking love Satsi, dude. Uh, 
ride or die for Satsuki, man. She is just the sweetest angel in the world. Oh my god. Oh yeah, oopsie. I think I accidentally removed Mitch in the last one before I should have since um, I always want to leave the victim in the culprit spin too. Oopsie, forgot about that one. Sorry guys. It would have been kind of funny if Mitch killed himself. <laughs> that sounds so dark, dude. <laughs> so fucked up. Too bad I forgot to leave him in the spin. I was just so excited I wasn't thinking straight. But who would kill Satsuki, man? It must have been Mitch, dude. He fucking came back from the grave and he slayed her out of anger. He wanted revenge against me for manifesting his death. Ah, uh, that's so sad though. I love Satsuki so much. Okay, who did this? Who is the most evil person in the world to do this? <gasps> No! <laughs> Why am I getting these spins, dude? What the fuck? This is the second one that's like literally flipped. Is this like karma for me? Saying that it'd be funny if Mitch killed himself? I'm sorry, God. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. I take it back, it wouldn't be funny. It would be hilarious. Oh my God, literally the protagonist dying and he kills Satsuki? Like, I cannot. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand how this would happen. Why would this happen? I think I am finally coming up with a scenario for this godforsaken chapter. So the motive in chapter two was that Monokuma had notes with everybody's secrets on it, but he like mixed them up and gave them to random people. So, you know, everybody got different secrets. Like Kazuna might get Yuki's and Kenji might get Kenjo, stuff like that. What if like some of those secrets that Monokuma puts out. Some of them are lies and some of them are truth. Maybe like, um, you can't share the motives until you get to the trial, just so, you know, for maximum drama efficiency. And then the other rule is that you can't talk to anybody else about like, um, what note you have. And so Haru gets one saying that Sasuke is the mastermind. And so he can't like directly confront her, but he's like really freaked out. He's like, isn't she kind of dumb? Like, wasn't she dancing during the last investigation when we were kind of like trying to solve this shit? But but he's like still really freaked out about it. Then Satsuki instead gets something saying that her and Haru were in a relationship. And maybe she even gets the picture from the fourth chapter just as like proof. So basically the mastermind sets it up to where Haru kills Satsuki because they're just evil. They're just jealous of their pure love. Why even in this version do they have to go to Mexico, man? By each other's hands. I can't, I can't. So anyway, Haru gets a note saying that Satsuki's the mastermind. He tries to confront Satsuki about it. And then Satsuki just like trusts him completely because she saw a note saying like the opposite, that they were close. And then there's the picture of them kissing. I think she'll be kind of like confused about it, but I kind of think it'll be similar to like chapter four with Haru. She'll kind of like be remembering her emotions. And so she'll feel like she can trust Haru. And then Haru will end up killing her because he thinks she's the mastermind. And then he'll find out during the trial that she wasn't the mastermind and that that note that Monokuma gave him was a lie and that in actuality they were together in their memories and they were in love and they should have gotten married and never gone through this killing game. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I just need some therapy. <laughs> I think it's kind of interesting too, cause like you're playing from the first player perspective too. So you kill Sasuke as Haru and Haru's like, man, then the game ended. Like what's going on? I thought the game would end now. I guess she wasn't the mastermind, fuck. So then I guess maybe that's when he goes into survival mode. And then in the trial, instead of like having to solve the case, you're having to like lie and uh, try to defend yourself. Oh, that's such a cool idea. I wish we could have done that in Danganronpa. And then there's a twist of finding out that you and Satsuki were actually together together and Monokuma confirming being like, yeah, that other note was bullshit about Sasuke being the mastermind. You guys were actually in love. Oh my God, look at this kawaii picture of you guys kissing. Isn't that adorable? Too bad you killed her. Oh my God, that is so sad, dude. I think that sounds like a really good trial though. I like it, I dig it. Okay, who's the new protagonist? New protagonist. Yay, I'm in pain. <gasps> yes, slay, slay. Yes, let's fucking go! Let's go, Kenji! Slay, slay, slay! Oh no, I should not be saying slay. He will definitely slay. Watch him like still kill Inori and Kakaru in this chapter, even though he's the protagonist. Like even in this game, he's like, Weeby, I don't, I don't really understand this word slay. Don't slay, Kenji, please. I want you to live this time. Live with me in Delulu land. Oh my God, I'm so fucking happy. I'm so happy. Yes, Kenji! Okay, first victim of chapter three. No! Oh, no, not Kenjo! Not my best boy! Damn it! My 
another best boy. Well, I couldn't have everything, I guess. I got the Kenji Pro tag, but I couldn't get the Kenjo. Surviving till the end. Damn it, he looks so happy too. Who would do this? He can't help it, guys. He can't help it that his personality is just like quirky, okay? He's just a goofy little guy. Who is the next victim? Probably like Kenji somehow. <laughs> No! <laughs> God damn it. Kenji, if you did this again, I'm gonna flip the fuck out. I'm gonna flip out. It better not land on you, homie. It better not land on you, dude. Okay, for the culprit spin, I guess we'll um, leave Kenjo out since, yeah, he wouldn't be able to kill himself first and then kill Anori. Man, I kind of wanted a culprit Kenjo, though. I'm so sad. That'd have been fun. Oh, well. I guess, like, it makes sense that somebody might try to kill him, though. You know what I mean? I can get it. I love him, but I get it. We're doing the culprit for chapter three. Kenji, I swear to God, if you fucking did this. <laughs> it's like it's getting... Kakaru, really? What the fuck, dude? Why? How? What? This is such a weird wheel, man. Why would you do that too, Kakaru? What? Man, why? Why did you do this, buddy? Why'd you do this? Why'd you kill Inori, man? He was trying to save Inori from Kenjo and somehow <laughs> accidentally killed Inori afterwards. <laughs> I was like, I'm definitely gonna make it to where Kenjo was trying to do some killing, okay? Kenjo, he's definitely one to, I guess he's not one to slay, but he's one to like try to induce self slaying. You know what I mean? Kenjo just like walks up to them. He's like, you know what guys, be pretty cool if you killed yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna go with the same motive that they did in chapter three. Monokuma shows them the desire videos and he says, you know, it's a wish you want to obtain in your lives right now. And then you can't share what you saw or your reaction to the video, just like in that chapter two. And so I'm thinking this time it's gonna be Kakaru that's the traitor. I mean, like he's such a sweetheart. I can't imagine like why he would kill anybody otherwise. So instead of it being like the orphanage, it's gonna be Midori that's in the video. So in Dying Drop Another, chapter 6.5, you find out that Midori, his sister is rather sickly. So I'm thinking in this version, it's gonna be like a lot more extreme. Like she literally has to be like hooked up all the time to like medication and like hospital stuff or else she's just like suffering horribly. So I'm thinking that Monokuma is gonna show him a video of Midori like suffering. So Monokuma is gonna be like, ah, oh, you better kill somebody quick, Kakaru. She's suffering and she could be dying any minute now. And so it's gonna give Kakaru like a really Real sense of urgency to kill somebody because like not only is she gonna die soon but she's literally suffering like as he's just walking around like hanging out with everybody and so Kakaru his plan is to kill Kenjo because Kenjo's smart and he's psycho <laughs> you know so he's like I guess I won't feel quite as bad killing Kenjo he does sometimes talk about us all slaying ourselves and so that's why he decides to take down Kenjo because Kenjo's a little cray cray I think like Kakaru and Kenjo's confrontation would be pretty interesting too because Kakaru is like such a sweetheart. I feel like he's gonna be really upset to kill somebody, even Kenjo, who is a little cray cray. And so he's gonna be trying to explain like, you know, it's just my sister. She's really in bad shape. She's suffering like as we speak, like I just really wanna save her. She's the most important person in my life. And so Kenjo, of course, is gonna be like, yeah, whatever, criminal scum. Killing's never okay, blah, 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 blah. Cause I feel like in Danganronpa another, Kenjo had like a bit of a malfunction because Kenji was saving more people. So technically it was better for him to kill and Kenjo just like could not process that. That. I feel like in this situation though, he'd be like, no, that's bad, that's wrong. You can't sacrifice all of us for your sister's sake. So he's not gonna be like super sympathetic to Kakaru. So, so I'm thinking Inori is gonna walk in, she's gonna see Kenjo like dying and Kakaru is gonna be standing over him. And I'm thinking Kakaru is gonna try to like lie and be like, I didn't do that. Kenjo tried to slay himself. I'm thinking it could be like in a library. So then if it's like a contusion of the octopus scenario, he can say like, oh, Kenjo fell off the uh, bookshelf. And that's why he's, dying right now. And yeah, in this situation, I'm thinking Kinjo is on the verge of death, but not dead. And so I'm thinking Inori, she's like a sweetheart. I don't know if she'll really believe Kakaru though, because it's like so obviously sus, you know what I mean? But Inori will be like, okay, this is obviously like super sus, but whatever, we gotta try to heal him as quick as possible. And so Kakaru is like, no, he's already dead. Like there's nothing else to do. Like, what do you mean? And she's like, no, he's still alive. And so that's when he decides that he also has to kill Inori. So like his deal with Monokuma will be similar to the one that Kinji made. He just has to kill. He doesn't have 
to like escape. But you know, like he wants to see his sister again. He misses her. He probably feels terrible that she's suffering and that like he might even feel like a sense of responsibility for her suffering since like Monokuma's put all this pressure on him. Like you have to kill and like the longer you wait, the more she's gonna suffer. Even though it's not his fault, I feel like he could feel like it's his fault. So once Kinjo's not dead and Inori's trying to save him, he's like, I just have to, I have to go all in. This is the only way that I can save her and try to save myself so I can see her again and apologize. Oh, it's so sad, man. Poor Kakaru, poor Inori. So now we are at chapter four. Who is going to be the victim of chapter four? Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Let's see. Oh, whoa, Makako, aw. Aw, Makako, she's so cute, dude. Man, asshole killer again. Actually, Haru didn't mean it. He, he did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong whatsoever. Oh, that's so sad. Makako is so sweet. I kind of wonder if she's going to be like super connected to like the backstory of this game too, because she was like so um important to like the main story in Danganronpa another. But we will see who killed Makako. Who would do this? Oh, what? Oh my god. Is it Teruya? Did Teruya sl How did he even do that, dude? He's so fucking tiny. <laughs> oh my god. I'm fucking dead, dude. How did he even do that? <laughs> He's like, get over here, Makako. <laughs> he like, can't even reach her. What are you doing, Teruya? <laughs> I'm gonna stab you. I'm serious about this. I guess it kind of makes sense for Teruya to slay, though, in Chapter 4, since, like, you know, he was the one that was, like, really upset about um, the food being lost and all that. I'm just, like, thinking of that scene where, like, Makako and Teruya are, like, dancing in the ballroom, but Teruya just, like, stamps her with his hair during it. It was an accident, I swear! My hoge is too strong. It's too powerful. He, like, used that as his murder weapon, dude. <laughs> I could see it. I kind of would love a trial where Teruya uses his hair as a murder weapon, Honestly, that would, that would be kind of epic. <laughs> no joke. Okay, so chapter four is the super fun chapter where um, everybody gets locked in the ballroom and they only have a limited amount of food. And that, of course, makes everybody like on edge and makes some people act really selfishly while others try to think of the best for the group. So it just makes tensions rise a lot. And of course we had Kenjo telling us all to slay ourselves in that chapter, which was super duper epic and fun. And then in that chapter two, Teruya was definitely one of the people that was like the most on edge. Like he was literally planning on killing Haru at one point because he was like so hungry and upset at Haru for eating the food too. So everybody is in a group besides Kazuna and Rei. The main people who are abusing the food are Teruya and Kazuna. And so so once the food starts dying out, that's when they all start getting on edge and when they start to actually contemplate like killing, you know? And so just like in chapter four, even though Teruya has been like sneaking food and stuff, he's still like one of the people who's the most on edge. And so I'm thinking he'll still be the one to bring up like the majority vote thing. Like I'm thinking the group will catch Kazuna in the act of hoarding food, but they haven't caught Teruya yet. So he's gonna be like, oh, I was Kazuna this whole time. We should just murder her guys. But then to his surprise, there was somebody who did acknowledge him sneaking food. And that is Makako because in this version, she could still be keeping an eye on the hallways like she did in chapter four. And so she's like, I don't know Teruya, I'm not so sure about that. Maybe like, you you shouldn't be talking about majority votes and killing each other since you're also hoarding food. He could be hoarding like not as much as Kazuna, but like uh, he's still hoarding food. And so that's when everybody starts to turn on Teruya and starts to alienate him a bit. And so Teruya is really pissed off and he's on edge because he's starving. He's pissed off at Makako because she was the one who outed him for hoarding food. And so that's why he decides to kill her. It's not a very good plan, but Teruya is not really the brightest. And he would also be like starving and stuff. So I think he wouldn't be like thinking right. It could be a situation kind of like what Yuki went through in chapter four when he just sort of entered this haze and was like in survival mode of like, I gotta go to the arsenal. I gotta kill somebody. I'm so freaking hungry right now. So I'm thinking it could be something like that. And that's why the plan's not really that good. You know what I mean? But that is the the best scenario I have for that chapter. Bye bye Teruya, bye bye Makako, I'm sorry. Shouldn't have slayed. Oh my god, a Teletubby themed execution. That'd be the best part of him being the killer. Monokuma in the corner like, do you know how expensive gay Teletubbies are? They're twice the price of straight Teletubbies. Damn it, this execution's expensive. I also like to theorize that Teruya killed her with his hair. He didn't have to use anything from the arsenal. <laughs> Just because it's funny. Who could have made this hole in Makako that's exactly the same size as Teruya's a hoge? Teruya's in the corner like, um, 
I don't know who could have done it. Um, this is kind of homophobic to be accusing me right now, Yuki. Chapter five. Let's see who is the victim of chapter five. Oh, Kazuna. No, bestie. <laughs> who would do this to me? I've done nothing wrong ever in my entire life. Huh, who would kill Kazuna? I guess we'll see. I don't really have a exact reason as to why somebody would kill Kazuna. And since Kizaragi appearing was literally the motive of chapter five, I uh, don't know what to do for the motive for this chapter. <laughs> oh my God, I can introduce Bitch, the secret 17th student hiding in the school. That's so true. That'll have to be the motive for this chapter. Kazuna is just like, are you fucking kidding me, Weeby? You're gonna make a bitch kill me? Who killed Kazuna? Let's see here. Ah, Yuki Dookily. It's just so sick of Kazuna's shit. I'm outie. I was kind of wondering if honestly Yuki was going to end up being the mastermind because he was lasting so long, but I guess not. I guess there's still a chance of an Akane mastermind though, honestly, which would be kind of crazy. It is kind of interesting too, because like in the actual game, Kazuna wanted to kill Yuki in chapter two, but in this version, he kills her successfully, I might add. I feel like honestly, like Kazuna doesn't even really need a motive to like want to kill. So I think at this point, she's made it to chapter five. Maybe she even keeps trying to plan murders every chapter, but people keep like beating her to it. She's like, okay, this time I'm just gonna fucking kill somebody, okay? Like, I just wanna get out of here. Like, I've been waiting, waiting to be the killer. But everybody just keeps killing each other too fast, damn it. Maybe she's just like spending so much time using her big brain to come up with a murder plot that like, it just takes too long and somebody else always kills first. She just wants her plan to be perfect, you know? But this time she's like, okay, I'm sick of being in this stupid killing game. I'm just gonna kill somebody. I I guess she can maybe even try to do like a similar thing that she did in chapter two as well of like, she decides this chapter to finally pretend to be like changed and stuff to like lower everybody's guard and make everybody think like, oh, Kazuna's different now, she's sweet. And that's why she decides to try to kill Yuki. And then of course, when she tries to kill Yuki, he ends up killing her instead. It'd be nice, honestly, if Kazuna did get like some character growth from being in here for so long, but I don't know if I really see Yuki killing somebody unless he's like Utsuro. So I feel like it makes the most sense for Kazuna to have not gotten character growth, even though I would really like it. Okay, so now let's go for the mastermind, man. Who's gonna be the mastermind, dude? This is such a crazy list, man. If it's Kizaragi, that'd be crazy. If it's my support or my rival, that would be crazy. If it's Akane again, then that would be crazy because she was like, you know, the mastermind's helper in the actual game. And then if it's Kinji, that's gonna be crazy because he's a protagonist. It probably will be Kinji. You told me to slay, Weeby. It would be really interesting if it actually was Kizaraki though. I guess we'll see. Mastermind time. Oh my, is it really gonna be Kizaragi? No fucking way. <laughs> oh my God. I was literally thinking he would be like the most interesting one. Like, oh, it would be so cool, honestly. This section will contain spoilers for Super Dog and Rapa Another 2's prologue. So if you haven't started it yet, I recommend you do so before finishing the video. In the second game, there's a character named Mikado who is revealed to be the mastermind in the prologue. Originally, he tries to tell them he's a part of a group that fights despair, but he's outed as being the mastermind instead. So I haven't finished the game yet. So this is very, very, likely completely wrong. Also, don't tell me if it's wrong in the comments section because I haven't beat the game yet and I don't want to know. But to me, I imagine that he set the whole thing up because he's a Danganronpa fanboy who wants to have his very own killing game. So I'm thinking Kizaragi in this version could just have a successful version of that idea. So he tells them he's a part of the Kizaragi Foundation and that it's a good organization and he's here to help them overcome despair and beat Monokuma. But in reality, the Kizaragi Foundation is the group that was working with the ultimate despair. And of course, he's actually the mastermind. I'm thinking he'll just totally lie and manipulate the group the entire way through. He can tell them that the mastermind must have failed to erase his memory because he invented a memory blocking device. He can also make Monokuma be like really antagonistic towards him to make his lies seem more legitimate. This way too, he could tell everybody from the very beginning that they're not in Hope's Peak, but in the Kizaragi Foundation's building and that they were brought here by him and the foundation in order to protect them. As we progress through the game too, we can find propaganda in several of the rooms that back up everything he's told the group, like records of the Kizaragi group fighting against Junko and the Toa group. That way the students who might be suspicious of him will slowly change their mind due to this fake evidence. 
And I'm thinking, even though Ayame is a support character, I don't think he should be like support, but I think he should be somebody who's like really close to you as a player, you know? And so he's just somebody you kind of tend to rely on. He's like the group leader. So there might be like a little bit of distance between you and him, but overall he's like a very reliable, dependable character that you wouldn't expect to be evil secretly, you know? And since he's from the Kizaragi clan and they're like this big company, he could just be like a spoiled rich kid. And once he found out about Junko, he would is like oh so edgy she's so cool like i want to be just like her he loves despair and he's just like papa i would like to have my own killing game and so his mommy and daddy set up the whole killing game for him so he can role play both junko and makoto at the same time i'm thinking too that this will take place after trigger happy havoc and so he like got to watch you know the live feeds of like makoto and his journey and that's when he fell in love and wanted to be just like a Makoto, but he's also a Junko Kinney. This is so hard. Oh well, I guess I'll just be both in my very own killing game. Papa, please set it up for me. Ooh. -woo. <laughs> Oh man, Kizaragi, I'm doing you so dirty in this game. So dirty. Okay, well I think that concludes the the killing game. So our survivors are Akane, Ayame, I love that they survived, dude. They're canon in this universe. We love to see it. I like it too because like I said before, Ayami was like eyeing Akane in the first chapter like sad that she was hanging out with Maki. But then like maybe after Akane like goes insane for Maki's death in chapter two, Ayami is the one to like comfort her and like take her in. And that's when they fall in love. And they actually get to be together in this universe. We also got ultimate girl boss, Rei Makaru. I got Kenji Slay. He slayed his way through the killing game. Ah, this is an alternate universe where Kenji actually understood what the meaning of slay meant. I, I love this universe. Mitch died first. Kenji knows what slay means. This is like a blessed universe. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about my scenarios and all the crazy stuff I landed on. These videos are always just like so insane. I still cannot believe we got first victim Mitch, man. Like, I cannot believe it. Oh gosh, what a beautiful, what a beautiful world. But yeah, let me know what you guys thought about this whole killing game, what you thought about my scenarios. And if you guys have any ideas on what you think might have happened instead i love reading stuff like that there have been a couple of times too in the last videos that i actually liked y'all scenarios better than mine so please do leave any ideas and thoughts you have in the comment section and yeah thanks guys for watching please do leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you enjoyed it that kind of stuff really does help me out a lot and yeah i will see you guys real soon